Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to another video in the Telefunken de Kapo series. If you saw the last video, you saw the cock up that I made on the, uh, well, with the faceplate, getting rid of the decals. Sometimes you can just clean too much. But uh, I did the RF alignment for the AM bands, and I then wanted to look at the RF alignment for the FM bands, especially because I wanted to extend the band. Now, usually what you get is you get, you can stretch the band usually. Now, when you can stretch the band, it means you have an adjustment at the low end, an adjustment at the high end. You know, usually you adjust a trimmer capacitor on one end and the trimming coil on the other one, as you saw me do with, um, with, the, uh, with the AM bands. Basically, it works the same way. And uh, what you do is you would tune somewhere down near the bottom. You would trim that, trim either the cap or the, or the, um, or the coil. Then you'd move to the other end of the band and you'd adjust that as well. Now that is ideal because it allows you to stretch or compress the bands. Now, simply put, it means that if you're at the bottom, if you're sitting at the bottom at um, say 87.5, which is where this thing starts, and you want to keep 87.5, but you want to extend the uh, 100, say to 101.6, which is what I normally want, then you would go to the top end and you would adjust that to be the oscillator section, but you'd adjust uh, the top end would be the cap. Yeah, cap, I think. Keep getting them wrong. And you would stretch that band, then you'd come down to the bottom and you would adjust that slightly to make sure that it hasn't crept up. And that normally works quite well. Other radios, and this is one of them, you don't, don't really get that luxury. Now, the best way for me to describe this, to show you graphically what this means. If you look at the band, you've got uh, the 87.5 on the left end, 100 on the right, and in between, there's one marked at 94.5. Now, the importance of 94.5 is actually very simple. What they do here is they make sure that the antenna circuit, in other words, the first coil that your antenna sees, which is also a tank circuit, they make sure that that one is centered at 94.5. And by their calculations, or by their design criteria, they have ensured that if you peak that tank circuit at 94.5 to allow the antenna signal to come in, then you will have a gently dropping response both below and above. Now, it is not linear. If you look at this from 87.5 to 94.5, you've got 7 megahertz. And then from 94.5 to 100, you've got 5.5. Uh, that is just the way it works. You don't have a linear correlation between the tuning and the space on the dials because tank circuits are notoriously non-linear. So what we have here is if you peak the antenna circuit, in other words, you open the sluice gate at, for the antenna signal to optimally come through at 94.5. By their logic, if you take this one step further and you look at the antenna alignment, it means that your antenna is letting in everything from 87.5 to 100 optimally. Optimally meaning it starts weaker, it goes stronger all the way to 94.5, and then it weakens a little bit down to 100 as well when you go beyond 94.5 megahertz. But that doesn't really matter because the response is actually very good. It's, it's not completely flat across the band, but it's not bad, okay? So that's why they have that central frequency range that is pointed out and is, well, it's important for the purposes that we are going to look at next. Because on this radio, what they tell you to do is they tell you to send a 94.5 megahertz signal, and they tell you to, well, force the dial, the indicator, to show 94.5 on, uh, on the dial, and they tell you that that's it. Nothing else, okay? You can't do anything else. That's not strictly true. They do show you on the uh, front end, on the can, you know, that FM aluminium can, they do show you where the oscillator coil is. And fortunately, there's only one adjustment for the oscillator. And that means that you can change, you can move where that uh, the frequency starts and where it ends, but it's always the same span between the, the bottom and the top. In other words, in this case, you've got 12 and a half megahertz and no matter where you move that, that frequency, you're going to get uh, 12.5 megahertz, meaning that if you want to increase it to 102, 
right, which is ideally what I would like to do, I'm going to lose 2 MHz at the bottom. So I'll only be able to tune from 89.5 to 102, which is a bit of a bummer because I really have to choose what it is that I want. Now, I have two stations down at the bottom. One is at 88 and one is at 89.3 and they are both pretty important. The one that I normally listen to most is actually at 101.6. We can shift the frequencies from 89.5 all the way to 102, but there's one problem now. Now we don't know where the antenna reaction is going to be. We have to really test it, and, and it's very simple to do that. You set a frequency up, you set a signal up at 102, and you measure its response, you set one up at 89.5 and you measure, measure its response and you sort of twiddle the uh, antenna tuning uh, coil, which I think is number 102 on the schematic, till you get approximately equal responses, both at the top and at the bottom. And it's not unusual for one end to be more sensitive than the other. That's just the way it works. But I'm not sure what I want to do and I'm not sure I want to do that. But in the meantime, what I will be doing is I'll be testing this. And to test this, I'm using this. <laughs> now, this um, little gadget is a stereo um, test generator. And what it can do is it can send or create or generate a, an FM signal with modulation. So you can put a tone on it. Actually, you can put three tones on it, but the one I normally use is the one kilohertz. You can transmit in mono or stereo. You can mute. If you're doing it in stereo, you can mute, mute the left signal, you can mute the right signal, and you can mute both, so you can just have the carrier. It's your choice. I normally use this on these radios in mono, just with the, um, with the one kilohertz signal. And this actually comes with a slightly hot signal. It's a fairly strong output signal. And this has been raised, this issue has been raised quite a few times in the comments, because I did a video on this, and they say that it's useless for any of these purposes. Well, it's not. Because what I did do is I got myself some attenuators. Now, these attenuators are perfect. You can buy them, and they were very cheap. Just got them on eBay. I can't remember where you got them, where I got them. But these things just basically fit on here. And while this thing transmits between, uh, what is it, 88 and 118. You can then attenuate this by either, this one is a 6 dB attenuator, I've also got a 15 dB attenuator, and I've got a 10 dB attenuator. So I can stack these any way I like. It starts looking like an antenna, but I can stack them. And I end up with whatever power I've put on here, I've programmed on here, minus, what is it, 10, 25, 31, minus 31 dBs, okay? And that is plenty good enough for testing these radios. There is still one little problem, and that is this thing's a 75 ohm system. Our radio antenna normally looks for 300 uh, ohm signal, but for that, you can build one of these. Now, what is this? Well, this is actually um, an, an LPAD it's an antenna, or it's an impedance converter from 75 ohms to 300 ohms. And you find these circuits everywhere. I had it built, or I built it just as a conversion from 75 ohms to 300 ohms. So at this end, you stick this into the antenna and you have a, basically you have a balanced antenna signal. This is the ground if you want to short this to the chassis. Normally don't use that. Your signal comes in here, out of here, into here with a coax. And then it goes from here into the radio. And that works pretty well. Now this thing, generally a uh, 75 ohm to 300 ohm L pad would have, I think it's 5.1 dB loss. I think that's how it works. If you look at the maths and you've got the, this is, this is just resistors, okay? By the way, just a note, if you want to find the circuit for this, if you look for the schematic for the Sencor SG165, I think it is, which is a, an FM, a complete sort of FM signal generator, they've got this uh, design there. They've actually put a capacitor in series on one line. It's uh, electrolytic, and that, the idea of that is basically just to stop a DC affecting, but I don't have that because this thing is battery, okay? And I went one step further. I thought, well, if I can build an, if I need to build an LPAD, which I had already built, um, why not put an attenuator in here? And again, on the SG165, 
the Sencore SG165, if you look at the output circuit, they've got um, Pi, or is it Pi? Yeah, Pi attenuators that you switch in basically to set your millivolt level. And then there's actually a pot for the fine tuning. But what those Pi attenuators do, what those switching um, uh, options give you is minus 20 dB on each one. And the reason I know it's minus 20 dB is if you look at any calculator, you'll see that if you use 91 ohms on the vertical um, legs, vertical resistors and 390, it's actually 370 something on the cross resistor, that comes to 20 dB attenuation. I built a 24 dB attenuator in series with the LPAD, and you can do that. So this thing is now an LPAD. It converts or takes 75 ohm from here through or direct, through the attenuators or direct. Okay. If I bring, if I take it through direct, I don't have any of these attenuators in place. So I bring it in here. It goes through a 24 dB attenuator and then it gets to, to a conversion stage, which takes it from 75 ohm optimum impedance to 300 ohm optimum impedance. Now, unless I'm testing a um, FM stereo tuner or something like that, I don't really need these attenuators because 24 dB, and if I set that at the minimum power level, is plenty good enough. Signal is just right. Um, I can't tell exactly what it is, although I suppose I could. I mean, this thing is uh, minus 5 dB, minus 24 dB, so this is minus 29 dB. Call it 30 dB attenuation. And I have tested this. It's very difficult to measure. Um, an FM carrier signal, a 100 megahertz signal coming out of that thing, coming out here into the scope and comparing the two voltage levels. OK, but I've done that and it's approximately right. I mean, by mathematics, it should be 29.1, I think it is, dB. And I read, I calculated about 30 dB drop. So it's working fine. And I'm going to set this up and we're going to do what they ask us to do, which is to send a 94.5 megahertz signal. And we'll see if the dial is adjusted properly. And we'll also see how the antenna circuit is. We'll look at the top end, see what the maximum frequency is that we can receive on this. We'll see what the minimum frequency is that we can receive on this. We'll see whether we can adjust it slightly, just to mess around. You're not supposed to mess with these circuits. They tell you that they can go into oscillation and you can never set it up again. But hey, <laughs> where's the fun? Uh, we've got to have some fun with this thing. If we mess it up, we mess it up. We just have to work on it. Um, but I'll set it up and we'll test it and do the alignment. And then I have to make a decision as to whether I want to pick up that 101.6 or whether I want to prefer, or I prefer to pick up those two at the bottom. I'm inclined to leave the two at the bottom because I live in Caniso, which is outside of Funchal. And this is where the 101.6, uh, the, the frequency on which one of the stations that I listen to is being transmitted, 101.6. That same station is transmitted in about four frequencies in Madeira on the island, depending on where you are. And in Funchal, it's way down. I think it's on 95 or 96, somewhere there. So depending on whether this radio is going to be left here at home or down to my office, which is probably where it's going to go, I probably will leave the low end as is and sacrifice that, um, that top frequency. However, I, I will go to the top frequency, see if we can actually pick it up so that uh, we can see whether the theory of messing around with this front end is correct or not. And why not? Let's get going. Now, one of the other characteristics of this little baby is that it comes with some software. You connect it via USB to your uh, computer. And I have it on my PC, which is underneath. <laughs> so I have to mess around here. I've got one monitor and I've got to use the PC and I can't forget which mouse and keyboard it is. And the reason it's on a PC is because they don't have the software for Mac. And here we are. But what this means is that I can control everything that's uh, that I want out of that little device from here. I can control whether the RF signal is on or off. I can control whether the uh, audio modulation is on or off. I can control the power. And over here, I'm going to put it at a minimum, which is 100 and which is 88 dBV, dB micro V. And we put the frequency at 94.5 megahertz. And that's where it's transmitting. It's now transmitting a signal at 88 dB microvolts. 
uh, FM signal. It's transmitting in mono because I haven't activated stereo here. And it's got a one kilohertz signal because I haven't muted any of the channels. And we should pick that up if we look at, uh, if we tune the radio to uh, 94.5. I'm just checking whether I've got everything else. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. And here's the signal sequence. We've got our uh, ELV generator. Signals coming out of there. It goes across here to the little gadget there which is our L-pad with a uh, attenuation. And that in turn then goes into the back into the dipole antenna input. So we should be ready to go. I've set that all up and I've got the dial just below 94.5. See where we pick it up. Damn, it's exactly on there. Actually, no, this is where it's optimum. And how can I tell? Well, I prefer to show you. See, you can hear it there, but this is where it is optimum. And this is how I know, because I'm looking at the signal on the scope. I'm going to put dummy load. This is our signal on the scope. And if I tune to 94.5 exactly, See that? I can hear it, but it's not optimally tuned. So this is where it is optimum. Okay, so we're slightly off there, slightly off. All right. Now let's see what we pick up at the top end. So we'll tune this guy up to the top as far as it'll go. That's it there. And now I can start dialing this up. I could do this on the screen, but it's just as easy to do here. There we go. It's nearly there. Let me show you the sequence that we're seeing on the screen. I'll put it on dummy load because it really is annoying. But as I click through, I'm on 99.37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. That's 99.43, 44, 45. That seems to be about it. 99.45, if I go a bit further, 99.5, we can call that 99.5, that's about right as well. That's what we get. So it doesn't go higher than that. Actually, let me see if I can tweak it a bit more. No, that's as high as it goes. At the moment, that's what we're getting, which is uh, quite a long way from 101.6. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to try and adjust that um, coil, that uh, oscillator coil, and see what happens. Can we get to 101.6? And then what happens to the low end? Now I know that this is the trimmer that adjusts the frequency, the frequency of the oscillator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on 100, which I have done, right? And I'm going to adjust this guy. See if we can get up there. Yeah, I've got there and I've gone past. Now I'm going to increase the frequency again. Okay, so I'm going to give it to 100.5. 100 Actually, I'm going to go all the way to 101. So we're sitting with 101 now. Let's see if we can pick it up. Perfectly. Yeah, 101 is there. Let's try 101.6. Actually, let's try 102. So we're now sitting with 102. Yep, 
Ya. Okay. And that is now picking up 102 megahertz. So we have done that. We have moved it up. Now we need to see what the bottom looks like. <laughs> that should be interesting. So I'm going to tune the dial all the way to the bottom. Now remember, it was supposed to be 87.5. This thing has got presets, and I think one of them is 188. I think it's that one's 88. Okay, so we're already on 88. Put the volume up, put the sound on. See what we get. Where are we? There we go. We just get the turn down. We're now at 88.88. That is the lowest that will go. That's right at the bottom, pegged at the bottom. So that means I've given up my station at 88.0, which is not something I want to do. So I'm going to put it back. <laughs> I'm going to put it back and uh, leave it as is. I'm going to adjust it perfectly to 94.5. And I'm, I won't be doing it the way they suggest because I've now got freedom to mess around with the with the oscillator there. So I'm going to go back to 94.5. As I said, you can input this directly on your on the app, but I've removed it from the app because I wanted to show you on the screen here. So 94.5, and now we need to tune it and see where we are. Here we go. Got some volume up. There's 94.5, okay? There it is. It's coming out at 91, 92, 91 point something, where it should be there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up. I'm going to put this on 94.5 exactly. We're at the top of the band. Let's see where we go. There we go. That's about it. 99.68, 99.7. That's the maximum it'll go to. One more thing I want to do is I want to optimize the antenna circuit. Now the antenna adjuster is here. It's this one over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on 94.5 and look for a peak signal. So we'll see how we go. So I've added these two, two attenuators, a 10 dB and a 15 dB. And the reason I put these two on is I look at the scope and I can still see the signal, but it's very weak. I'll show you. Now I can put it on dummy load. Let me just tune it optimally. Yeah, dummy load. Okay. The volume up a bit. So we are receiving it with some static, which is what we want. And now we'll see if this thing improves anything. Very, very slightly, it's actually going down, but I'm looking at the meter as well. We take it out. Not really, not really. So that was rather a disappointing result. I thought I'd get something more out of the antenna circuit, but thinking about it, it's probably something you'd have to optimize with the dipole that's in the radio itself. 
And the final conclusion is that this radio is probably not going to be used at home here. I'll be using it down in the office in Funchal itself, where all the stations are below the 100 megahertz. And it should be pretty good, but uh, we've still got quite a way to go. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to go have a drink with my wife down by the seaside, have a snack perhaps. This is what we have to put up with. It's tough, but someone's got to do it. Can you imagine this? Every day, every day, the suffering. Oh, the suffering. Anyway, enough waffle. I want to thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed that, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. If you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and stay safe.